Hey there, guys. Hello, there is, this is Mr. D. I am bringing you the new R, which is computers, to you and hope that you enjoy this R. At this time, I'm going to give you my qualifications on this honor because this is where I come from. Let me bring up my uh, screen for you. All right, hold on. I'm looking for share, and I found it. There we go. Hello there. This is Mr. D. This honor hits close to home. Reminds me of what I did before being Mr. D or a master guy for the path letters. I was a computer person. I would like to be better referred to as a coder. A coder is like a programmer, a designer. If you were to click on this coder on this page, it bring you up a uh, web page that will show you what a coder is. Maybe at time, I can do that at the end of this talk. I wrote custom software for banks, investment firms, real estate, restaurants, and pretty much whomever contracted me between 1980 and 2010. I first became involved with computers during the Vietnam crisis. And when I got out, I went back to college and got my degree. I started programming for a company in Los Angeles that opened the doors to the microcomputer technology that was merging in the late 70s. Companies like IBM, Apple, Radio Shack, Texas, Instrument and Digital, and many more were trying to get into the market first to provide the ideal computer to the everyday person. That is where Microsoft got into the game with its computer PC. PC, personal computer. IBM was a well-known name because of their typewriters. The na name IBM wrote a ticket into the arena, but it did not stay number one long. Computers started to change fast in the 80s, bringing foreign development, taking away our control of computers into the USA, but opened the door to many inexpensive companies that would now be for a business or individuals. The market opened up the doors as stated in the 80s or closer to the mid 80s when computers referred to as IBM compatibles or clones emerged into the field of PCs. The thing to notice was in 81 computers for dual floppy base, no hard drive was over $5,000. And some larger multi-user systems that had hard drives were around $20,000. The first computer market was hot, but by the end of the 80s, it averaged down with 486 processors and into the 90s with the Pentium processor that made computers even faster. But now computers were under 1,000 for those PCs and they had hard drives and they even may have one or two floppies being three inches or and a five and a quarter inch. Let me return to what I was doing the, during the computer growth of the 80s and the 90s. I had a computer store for a while, but most of my work was contract and with different counties. I was involved with restaurants again and clothing and city license renewals and social service application like the welfare. And as I said before, much more. The 80s and 90s brought lots of good contracts, but the best was the conversion of the 60 digit dates to eight digit dates stored in the database. This problem was a nightmare of the world for the Y2K terminal. The year 2000, which of course passed with no changes in life except the companies had new dates to worry about. <clears throat> Before I became Mr. D and had the honor of teaching children about God and what he has done, I was a software developer, a web designer, and a multimedia instructor at the Mount Sanger Central College for about five or so six years. But 
the call to be a substitute teacher drew me away from the job to where now I am here bringing honors to you, Pathfinders. Now, there were some great experiences that I did have during my career in the computers. I met a person, a lady called Grace, Grace Hopper, that saw where I saw, a, saw her at a computer meeting in the 70s. She held up a wire that was so long about the length of her arm and said, here is how far light travels in a nanosecond. And as you notice, I have highlighted this. You should go out and read that article because it's a really good article. And also told her story as a young person flying into the cloth wing, air, flying in with cloth wing airplanes. It was a dirt road at that time or cobblestone and landed in Times Square in New York. She was an interesting person as well as life saver. She was one of the few that helped with the internet computer to help save the Americans during World War II. I think that was the atomic bomb that she helped develop that saved us from the Japanese invasions. I think the field of computers have changed through those years from giant boxes with test tubes down to handheld cell phones and computers I see the games coming out with wireless headpieces that will replace the conventional monitors and possibly mouses and keyboards. Mr. D got out of that information technology field or IT because of the speed of the growth in the technology. When I was going for my master's in the early 2000s, they started, they stated that every two years technology doubles. So where does that leave us? You will find out as you grow with these changes, but in this honor, I will cover the basic technology. So what makes a computer a computer? It should be pretty easy and hope you learn something. I found this last link that will give you to narrative of computer differences through the 80s and the 90s. It's put out by an organization called Byte Scouts. So let's see if that gives you a little more information. And I will see you at the beginning of the stage of honors, they're coming up right after this line on the web page. Now, I'm going to take you up to the top and show you what we have here. So you can see coders. So I'm going to click coder. And you can see what does a coder do. And it goes down the line, talks about following the uh, uh, software development life cycle, which is very important in development. I have misplaced some of those thoughts. It's been over 20 years since I had to use them. Goes over the skills of the coders. So through the 20 years that I coded, I used a lot of this technique. Now, another link that we have on here that would be helpful is IBM compatibles. What were those? IBM compatibles, according to Wikipedia, talks about the creation of the IBM and then the IBM compatibles. This would be a good article to read for background information. And Pentium processors, when did they come out? They changed the technology from 486 to what they call a 586 or a Pentium. And they came out in 1993. And you can read a little bit about that changeover. Then my last few links we have here that I thought were important was the one about the nanosecond. Oh my goodness, that's so unbelievable. She even has videos on it, on how the nanosecond worked. Now let's see what we got here. Um, let's see, nanosecond. Let's see what she says here. It's only two minutes. Click for view. Okay, let's see what she says. They started talking about circuits that acted in nanoseconds, billionths of a second. Oh, I didn't know what a billion was. I don't think most of those men downtown know what a billion is either. <laughs> if you don't know what a billion is, how on earth do you know what a billion is? I fussed and fumed. Finally, one morning, in total desperation, I called over to the engineering building, and I said, please cut off a nanosecond and send it over to me. And I've brought you some today. Now, what I wanted when I asked for a nanosecond was, I wanted a piece of wire. 
which would represent the maximum distance that electricity could travel in a billionth of a second. And of course, it wouldn't really be through wire. Be out in space, velocity of light. So if you start with a velocity of light and use your friendly computer, you'll discover that a nanosecond is 11.8 inches long. The maximum limiting distance that electricity can travel in a billionth of a second. Finally, at the end of about a week, I called back and said, I need something to compare this to. Could I please have a microsecond? I've only got one microsecond, so I can't give you each one. Here's a microsecond. 984 feet. I sometimes think we ought to hang one over every programmer's desk or around the neck so they know what they're throwing away when they throw away microseconds. Now, I hope you all get the, your nanoseconds. They're absolutely marvelous for explaining to wives, and husbands, and children, admirals, generals, people like that. An admiral wanted to know why it took so damn long to send a message by a satellite. And I had to point out that between here and the satellite, there were a very large number of nanoseconds. You, see, you can explain these things. It's really very helpful, so be sure to get your nanoseconds. Wow, that was pretty so cool. That's pretty cool what she did. So you might want to read a little more on it. And I think you also have a link here for her and how the computers were when Grace Hopper was. And it shows you some pictures of the old computers and of her. And when she was young, working on these computers. So you can see we've come a long ways since the days of these computers down to where we're at now, which is like nothing. We don't have these tubes, we don't have anything like that. You might find this section interesting to read over to. And the last part I think I have, uh, I think that was the World War II. The last one is the 80s and the 90s. I threw this in at the very end because it talks about maybe the computers in the 80s and gives you a general synopsis. You might find some of the prices different. Like here, I didn't mention Commodore 64. I mean, that's kind of expensive. A thousand dollars for a little dinky uh, computer about the size of a Radio Shack or a small Sinclair. But uh, it was definitely uh, a uh, change in the market, almost as powerful as those days at IBM. So you have several links that I think you could read at if you'd like. And that's my introduction into this honor. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope that you learn something through my stages that I'm going to give you. If not, at least you'll know some buzzwords and you can impress your uh, friends with knowledge they may not have. So I will see you at the honors and we will get started. God bless. Bye-bye.